So you've sent a message, or maybe you've even tried to make plans, but you are getting radio silence in response. Well, instead of panicking or spiraling, maybe you're able to stay calm and grounded. And maybe you also find that your mind isn't jumping to conclusions or taking things personally. Well, is that how a securely attached person would react when they're being ignored or when somebody's not responding to them? And what is it that we can learn from their approach in order to stay calm and centered and grounded despite what's happening outside of our control? Because Many of us have been in that situation where someone we care about just isn't responding the way that we were hoping. And it can be easy to overthink it, wondering, was it something I did wrong? And maybe even finding yourself hyper-analyzing all of your last interactions and messages. And if you don't have the tools to manage this particular situation, you could find yourself feeling anxious, frustrated, maybe even angry. You may start questioning your own self-worth or chasing after attention in unhealthy ways. But in today's video, I'm going to take you through five key things securely attached individuals do differently when they are being ignored. I'm also going to talk about why and how they arrive there because the idea and learnings from this video shouldn't just be about reverse engineering whatever they're doing. For example, if they're fine with it. You can just pretend you're fine with it when you don't feel fine that somebody isn't responding. So I'm also going to tell you the how we can arrive there and some things you can start working on no matter what your attachment style is starting literally today. If you're new to this channel, I'm so happy you're here. Welcome. My name is Thais Gibson. I am a coach, counselor, an author, and founder of the Personal Development School, and I've spent over a decade working in the field of attachment styles and relationships. Our attachment style, if you didn't already know, is basically a relationship style. There are four major ones, and I'll put a little infographic right here so you can check them up for yourself. I'll also put a little link in the description to the attachment styles and you can learn more about them if you're not familiar and just want to read about them at a very high level. Now, five things that a securely attached person does differently when they are being ignored are number one, they don't personalize it. So one of the first things you'll see, and I can't even begin to stress how huge this is, is that with insecure attachment styles or so dismissive, fearful, anxious, preoccupied, they have more core wounds. In other words, they have more painful attachment experiences that they went through in their own upbringing that they've stored. And I want you to imagine, for example, that you are out in the wilderness. Maybe you're in, in the jungle or the forest. Let's say it's a forest and you see a bear and you run away from that bear and you get away and you're safe. But then when you have to walk back into the forest the next day, what are you thinking? You are constantly thinking, oh my God, where's the bear? Where is it? Is it around that corner? Is it behind a tree? You're looking out. You're on high alert. And this is how we function. If you went through experiences of abandonment as a child, you're constantly going to be re-projecting out the fear of abandonment, looking over your shoulder, wondering at any shift or change of pattern in a relationship dynamic, oh my gosh, is somebody about to abandon me? Or if you were betrayed a lot or trapped, you're going to constantly be projecting those types of wounds. And so because insecure attachment styles are dismissive, are fearful avoidant, our anxious attachment style all have more core wounds, they have more things and basically fears to reproject back out onto their relationships over and over again. And these very same fears also act as their biggest triggers. Because securely attached individuals have less core wounds, they are very much less likely to jump to the conclusions of their core wounds. So if you're an anxious attachment style, for example, and somebody doesn't text you back, what do you make it mean? You make it mean, oh my gosh, I'm abandoned or rejected because those are pre-existing core wounds from your past experiences. You're fearful avoidant. Maybe you're like, I'm I'm being betrayed. They've got something else going on. Um, or if you're dismissive avoidant, maybe the not texting back isn't affecting you in quite the same way <laughs> because it's less likely to touch core wounds around feeling trapped if somebody's not answering you. But of course, if you think somebody might be mad at you, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get criticized. That's why they're they're pulling away. They're gonna, they're angry at me and we're gonna get into an argument. So we can have all these different pieces of meaning we give to situations, securely attached individuals. Are less likely to have that. Now, how can you actually reverse engineer that? I can't even begin to tell you how important it is to realize and to know that those core wounds that you have do not have to stay that way, okay? Without going too far down the rabbit hole, because we have four other things to get into here, core wounds are conditioned experiences. And I want you to know a couple of things here. 
Number one, your conscious mind is responsible for three to 5% of everything. Your thoughts, beliefs, emotions, actions. Your conscious mind is like your logical thinking self, your analytical self, the part of you that you think of as your personality and who you are. Your subconscious mind is the collection of your patterns, your habituated self in a sense. And when you look at all of that part that functions, that's actually responsible for 95 to 97% of all of your beliefs and thoughts and emotions and actions. So a lot of the work when we're trying to heal our attachment style, we have to realize that one of the most important things we can do and work that I've done that actually has trademarked and, and copyrighted tools around this is you can reprogram your core wounds. As somebody with a background in hypnosis originally, I can tell you that our subconscious mind is malleable. We can recondition these patterns. Neuroplasticity is not a new thing. And this is something that we can really transform and change in a short period of time. So with that being said, I want you to know that there's lots of information on this channel about how to rewire your core wounds. You can search that, or I can put a free course down below that you can check out in a lot more detail. That's called 21 ways to rewire or reprogram your subconscious mind. That will be in the description box below too. You can learn tools so that you don't have to carry those fears with you all the time. You're not born with those fears. You're not born thinking that you're going to be betrayed or trapped. These are things that get conditioned into you and we can leverage our understanding of neuroplasticity to rewire or recondition those things in a very short period of time in very easy ways. Number two, securely attached people when they are being ignored, they remain calm. They don't let it affect their self-esteem. So they're not quick to be like, oh, something's my fault. This is my issue. And what they will do, which is arguably the most important part of this number two, is if they're concerned about something, they will communicate it. So let's say, for example, they're being ignored. If they're, you know, being ignored for a few hours and some time has passed, they may be like, okay, I need more consistency, for example, in this relationship dynamic. And so when they reconnect with this person, they'll tell that person, hey, you know, I haven't really heard from you much today or for the last couple of days. For me to progress or something I'm looking for for the, the dynamic here to progress is I want more consistency. I want to know that we can chat and stay in contact. And they will advocate for those needs because they're not so quick to personalize it and let it affect their self-esteem. So because they are able to communicate their needs, here's what happens next. Most people, a lot of the time, will show up for those needs or make an effort. But if somebody just doesn't, then they are also number three, because two and three go hand in hand. They are vetting the other person. They are not just sitting down trying to win somebody else's approval 24-7. They're instead looking at the relationship dynamic and they're like, hmm, am I a good fit for your life? Yes, they are wondering that. They are trying to take that into consideration. But equally, they are like, are you also a good fit for my life? And if I say I have a need for consistency and that's something I'm looking for in a relationship dynamic, I'm also paying attention to your behaviors. I'm seeing, do you show up consistently? Are you willing to, when I communicate this need, make a concerted effort the way that I might be doing for certain needs that you say are important to you? And if we're not willing to make that concerted effort to bridge the gap between potentially our differences in needs, then the securely attached person is okay with being like, I'm going to let this relationship go. So number two, they communicate their needs and don't let it affect their self-esteem. And number three, they actually are vetting the relationship on somebody's behaviors, not their words. How many times have you found yourself in a situation where you're like, somebody's telling you, oh, it's going to get better. We're going to work on this. We're going to work through this. And then you just see the same behaviors all the time. But because they're feeding you these big promises, you keep sticking around. Well, when we're vetting, Vetting means we observe and analyze somebody's behaviors. We do not go by their words. Words are an indicator, like a leading indicator that, yeah, maybe their behaviors change. People can tell you all the things under the sun. And if you don't see their behaviors following, it's really not that relevant. It's a really important number three. And number four, if they don't see people show up for their needs or, you know, they're being ignored and they're just not okay with this and it's a consistent pattern in the relationship, they set healthy boundaries and they respect their own time. In other words, they're clear about what are my standards in a relationship? What are my non-negotiables? What am I truly looking for? And they see, does somebody show up for these things? Or am I instead just seeing that there's a pattern where no matter what I say, the person doesn't show up? Well, then I don't want to be with somebody in this particular case because I value my own time too much and I know what I'm looking for and I'm not willing to settle. And I'll tell you the last piece here that's so important and I'm curious so far how many of these things you find yourself doing versus how many of these things you think you could actually improve upon because it can be really meaningful to pay attention to that. But 
they also will not assume the worst about the relationship or the person in that that gap of time or period of time that they feel like they're being ignored, but they will ask for clarity if it becomes a pattern. So they will make sure that you know they can communicate directly. And if they're seeing a change in the pattern that they don't like, they won't say, you're ignoring me, what's going on? You're doing something else. They won't make accusations. They'll say, hey, I notice there's a shift here. I want to understand what's going on from your end. So they will open space for a healthy conversation that creates vulnerability so that there can be clear and direct communication. And because they're not assuming the worst, they're more likely to be able to move through that in a healthy way because sometimes somebody is quote unquote ignoring them because they're upset. And so by approaching things from that manner and that perspective, it facilitates a much greater chance of the problem being resolved if it was a problem in the relationship that was causing the pulling away rather than an incompatibility or something that somebody's not willing to work on. And in case you missed it, you can now reserve your spot and get more than a 50% early bird discount for our live relationship coach certification program. Launching October 28th, 2024, this 12 week program gives you the opportunity to build a new career, create your own thriving coaching practice, help your community and secure your financial future full of abundance with a growing wait list of clients. And the best part is that you get to spend a whole bunch of time with me as I teach you exclusive subconscious reprogramming tools and help you learn how to change somebody's attachment style from insecurely attached to securely attached so that you can truly help create transformation in people's lives and have a wait list of people waiting to work with you. We also have an entire business week about how to build funnels, systems, and to really build a thriving and busy practice. You can sign up using the link down below the video, and I can't wait to see you there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more, I put daily videos out here on YouTube literally every single day for you to learn anything about the subconscious mind, attachment styles, and how to really heal our relationship patterns. We can build the best relationships of our life. Please hit the subscribe button down below if you don't want to miss any and share in the content in the comments down below what content you want to see next because I'm listening and I will go through them. Thank you so much for watching.